Good evening, everyone. And welcome to our today's CME. Our speaker is Dr. Wanga. Dr. Wanga, are you in the house? Dr. Wanga, can you hear me? Irene, I'm not hearing Dr. Wanga. His microphone is muted. I'm trying to unmute him. Huh? Let me ask him to unmute his microphone. Mute. Hello? 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 I, I, I think I can... Hello, Dr. Wanga. Hello, Ah, welcome. Thank you, sir. Our speaker today is uh, Dr. Wanga, he's in the house. Dr. Wanga is a non radiologist among us, and uh, he has gone a step ahead to do interventional radiology. And we requested him to do interventional radiology in orthopedics, which he agreed to do. And we are happy to have him. Arib Dr. Wanga, and we can move on. I hope Dr. Close, you've heard me, sir. Yes, I can hear you now. Thank you, and uh, I hope I'm visible too. Are my slides seen? Hello? I can't see your screen yet. Now. No. Hello. 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 Good, good, good. Huh? But there's a lot of echo, but still I'm not seeing. Just speak up for. Bring that phone. I told you you might be calling us. Hello? Hello? Oh. Please bear Please with me. Bear with me. Yeah, we're ready. Can you pause share? No. Oh, participants, that's at four. Well, there are many people. Okay. Oh yeah, I, I can I, let me close one. Eh? I'll close one, but it's not.
Hello, everyone. Uh, just give Dr. Wanga a moment. He is trying to locate his presentation. You're not hearing because I'm on the phone with him in just a few.
Okay. Good evening, gentlemen and ladies, colleagues. Am I audible? Tonight, I want to welcome you to a talk that we planned well, unfortunately. Hello, Dr. Wanga. Yes. You may have to put on your phone or uh, my? your phone. No, my phone is not here. It's outside, actually. Because uh, you, you don't have two devices. Is it better now? No, we can hear some echoes. OK, let me put it off. Just give me half a second. OK. I'll put it off and get very far away. I, I'm also getting the echoes on my side, by the way. Okay. okay, is that okay? Is that okay? Not, yet. Not yet. I don't have any other gadget here that I will ascribe the noise to. Hello? 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 Is it better now? Hello? Not so much, but we can start. Let's just start. Thank you. Uh, about how much time do we have? It's seven. We have like 40 minutes. Well, I'll present in 25 minutes and hopefully discuss 15 minutes. I've tried to change my position. I'm hoping it's not my ultrasound machines which are causing these echoes. Is that slightly better? Yeah, that is a bit better, but anyway, not that's so okay. clear. Uh, good evening, colleagues, and I want to apologize, first of all, for the delay, which is more than 30 minutes. Two, I also want to say how grateful I am to the Kenya Association of Orthopedic Specialists or Society of Orthopedic Specialists, and specifically to the Secretariat for this opportunity. My interest in orthopedic radiology is because most of the diseases we've had, most of the imaging we do derives from the anatomy and anatomy cannot be without orthopedic input. I still hear my own echoes, but I wish I could know where it's from, but bear with me. Uh, an adult person has about 206 bones. The skeleton is very intimate, the parts, one of them is, the appendicular skeleton and then the axial. These are important because many of them have functions and also tumors have propensity to go to certain uh, bones, especially the flat bones. The five subgroups are the low bones, which is like femoral shaft, the flat bones like the pelvic, the iliacs, short, irregular, and sesamoid. The muscles get attached, and the most important thing about the upper head posture is that uh, the upper limbs give support and carry weight against gravity. The feet they keep us upright, and I think without uh, uh, overemphasizing, the study of orthopedic radiology is so critical in our work. My interest in interventional, minimally invasive, image-guided uh, therapies because we need to work in concert to be able to provide the best options in management of patients. We also know that if a, a patient has got trauma, most of the organs we like to preserve will get injured. As you know, the skeleton uh, protects the brain, the lungs, the kidneys, or even the pelvis, the organs. Minerals are so important, and calcium and phosphate. Fat houses blood cell producing tissues of the body. So my idea in the overview of interventional biology of orthopedics could be go broadly on vascular uh, and non-vascular because when there's ischemia that changes, uh, there's no way that the metastasis without circulation. But for tonight, we want to look at bone tumors. Next time we may look at Dr. the- Dr. Wanga, issue. hello. Uh, we can still hear more echoes. It's not so clear. What I'll do- Do you have earphones? No, no, I don't have earphones. Or what, what I'll do, 
I'll go somewhere where there's no imaging equipment because maybe my office has got some imaging equipment. Okay, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Let me just walk across and uh, we shall continue our talk, I hope so. Unless the machine is letting me down. Hello? Hello? Oh, the echoes are still there. Yeah, it's still there. I think it would have worked better if you had maybe... We need to? Earphones, whether you... I, I use earphones? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Give me a minute. Check it out. I'm, I'm trying to see where. Oh. Is that better? Much better. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, you can continue. Okay. Uh, as we continue the presentation, it's a pity that I am not able to kill the, the echoes. But maybe I should be slow so that uh, we get the message out of this. When thinking of uh, bone lesions, we want to bring to mind the common size and the imaging modalities. Plain radiograph, radionuclear scanning, and recently PET scan, the augment, the imaging done by CT scan, and MRI. We are seeing in this lesion uh, areas of uh, bone destruction, the wing of the iliac bone, and this can cause a lot of pain. And when we are trying to manage pain, we target the areas of uh, the neurovascular bundle without uh, directing our needles into the nerve. Uh, to succeed in, in interventional management of patients, we shall consider multidisciplinary teams. Because of the nature of the bone lesions, which are metastatic, we may bring in the medical oncologists and primary care physicians to orthopedic table and also bring in radiologists. However, interventional radiologists are supposed to be proficient in the care giving for the areas of uh, undertaking one has studied. However, the key points are to be able to see patients, assess from the firing notes, take history and find out comorbids, be able to know what investigations you are going to assist the patient, and also form a team of a nurse and radiographer. This is a, a slide that demonstrates uh, corticomedular destruction of the sacral bone. Uh, you can uh, see it here, and the, uh, the as the iliac, uh, iliac bone is also involved, and you can see a radio density. This is not due to treatment, but it could be to a tumor deposits. Then here is another patient whose uh, pedicles have been destroyed, and to be able to stabilize this uh, spine, I know there are many or appliances in orthopedics which can be used, but if the vertebral body 
was entered, augmentation can be done to raise the collapse. But this also has its own restrictions, as you shall see, because if the spinal canal is compromised, then the introduction of cement through image guided intervention will be able to cause more complications than before. Here's again a case of possible giant cell tumor. And this can also be metastasis, both from the prostate, the kidney, and the thyroid. Treatment of this would be basically to control the pain. As you see, there's a needle here, and there's another needle there, and this is due thermal ablation. Thermal ablation have three types. We have one microwave ablation. We have radio frequency ablation, which is much more commonly used. But also you can have cryoablation, which treats by vaporization and cooling. Here is a case of a patient of wing, a wing sarcoma. We used to talk about it is being say, metadiaphysial. And this patient would be in a lot of pain and they require both orthopedic and also interventional radiologists to work together for cementoplasty and also reconstruction of the excised tumor site. This is another case. I want just to talk about augmentation, where you see the arrow is pointing to the collapsed fifth lumbar vertebral body. And this one, one can augment, assuming that it's not due to infection and it's not due to an active malignancy, which would require different treatment like radiotherapy. You can also see cement here on the body on the, uh, to be able to sustain this, this, uh, the vertebral body. You can also see a needle which is used to introduce the cement material. These are rods which are used in a patient with a collapsed uh, head and femoral head where you need to give uh, thermal treatment and then you eventually get the tissues to be strong. It can also be combined with the orthopedic technology, which you as our colleagues would teach us. I also want to introduce a place where here on the a wing of the left iliac bone, there's some cement material introduced. This cement material, if introduced in the disc, has one, I mean, rather the vertebral body, not the disc, never the disc. It will be able to protrude its arachnoid spread or cause arachnoiditis. So it's very important that we don't give it without proper training and also patient assessment. Uh, we've seen that. I want to go over a few factual issues which we need to bring to mind when dealing with the oligometastatic diseases and hope that at the end of this discussion, we can also explore applications of for interventional radiology in both trauma and also cold orthopedic patients. We say that metastatic disease arises from the specific cancer cells, the breast, prostate, lung, and kidney. I would add here some are osteolytic and others are metablastic. Now, osteoblastic ones come from the prostate. Osteolytic ones come from the kidney. The breast and lung tend to be mixed. Multiple myeloma appears to be the commonest 
uh, hematologic uh, lesion, which we here we call malignancy, and can also benefit from uh, vertebral body strengthening through cemental plasty. Actual skeleton, as I said before, is common. Primary lesions may affect the long bones, and the bone marrow microinvitement occurs as a reservoir of malignant cells, where the cells are supposed to penetrate the angiolymphatic basement membrane and get transported to distant organs. The tumor cells produce growth factors and cytokines, which activate osteoclasts, which disturb the balance between newborn formation and bone resorption, and therefore creating heaping up of for primitive bone tissue. So this is something which is both uh, space occupying and also compromises the strength of the bone matrix. This uh, shows us a case of multiple myeloma. You can see what they call osteolytic lesions on, on the plain radiograph. You remember before you had the CT studies, we were taught about punched out lesions. And for people are looking more carelessly, if, I mean, sorry, more carefully, if you look at that, the wall of the distal out, abdominal outer, shows wall calcification. So there's a problem with the calcium deposits and the metabolism. Uh, this is a good example of uh, where you are getting compromise of the spinal canal. Now, if we put cement, they could create more instability. And so it requires both the combined approach where one may do laminectomy or support only in the areas where pain are aggravating the patient's condition and maybe reducing movement. This is also another case where a patient with a lot of pain one would go through either the pedicle or a parapedicle or transpedicle. Now that one depends on whether we want to reduce the pain in the neuroforamina or because of metastatic lesions, which occur in the pedicles most of the time. And this one antenna may be sufficient, especially if the area of treatment is small. Such antenna are available in this country. Uh, radio frequency ablation has its advantages and microwave ablation too. As we move forward, there are other uh, uh, stereotactic body radiotherapy methods which you should look at because where we cannot use needles, then we need to do what they call SBRT. So this is the end of that aspect. Dr. Klonzo, are, are we together? Yes, I think just continue, finish okay, the thank discussion. You, okay, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, now why I'm well, keen on image-guided spine interventions because many of our patients suffer osteoporosis. Others have lytic metastatic lesions. And when we're looking at uh, oligometastasis, the number of lesions should be three or less, three centimeters in diameter or less. But this definition has changed over time. Now you can even think of oligometastatic lesions numbering up to six, as long as each of them is about three centimeters. 
then we talk of percutaneous metabroplasty. This is the placement of an acrylic cement, which is made of polymethyl acrylate. Uh, during fluoroscopy, fluoroscopy is the use of uh, x-ray continuous imaging, and therefore it is also required to be of high quality so that the operators don't absorb unnecessary radiation. They also need to be monitored regularly, and it's advised that uh, our orthopedic colleagues use radiation or monitor badges because at the end of the day, we need to absorb only a number of uh, radiation units per year. And these are called the sieverts, but that, this is not the time for it. The reason why I, I like to think about metaboplasty is for pain relief. And this occurs when there's osteoporotic vertebral body collapse, osteolytic metastasis, myeloma and myelodysplasia, vertebral hemangioma, osteonecrosis, injury, uh, especially the vascular uh, changes, and the pathophysiology of pain, mechanism of pain. These are not known, but the applications which we give in the perineural sheet tend to give very good results. Maybe you know better than I do that uh, the use of metabolism is not so old. And interestingly, it was formed by both surgeons and uh, imaging specialists eh, beginning in France 1984. And also there's been documentation in other areas 1993, it was North America. And as it is, patient selection are critical. The epidemiology of osteoporosis is uh, possibly a large area of study which we should be able to pay attention in our country, given that people are now staying to grow older than before. So the sites, which, as we said, that we've seen those images, is the spine, the hip region, the wrist, and others. The wrist, you know, affects most the people who use their hands, like dish washing, washing clothes, and all that manual work, so to say. Now, we need to establish what happens when someone has severe osteoporosis, the amount of time spent in reproductive life is difficult. Some get bedridden or confined to wheelchair. And the pain is so much that if there's a single vertebral body or two, people can do what they call augmentation or metaboplasty. But otherwise, the injection to control of pain or for the long acting steroids and the rest, it tend to work well for many patients. Also exercises make some patients pain tolerable and less. So what are the long-term effect? We know that someone sitting idle tends to have increased load on the vessel, vascular bed and also pulmonary function or constipation, urinary tract infection may lead to more debility. And this is where we like to say that our orthopedic specialists will guide us in the minimally invasive imaging to link and get policies where we can concentrate on these non-acute case or cases. So, when we talk of better body compression fractures, they are more interesting than osteoporotic. In osteoporosis, vertebroplasty of one vertebral body may actually cause a slip of the bone chips, what they call retroprotrusion. 
Surgery, I know you very know well, instrumentation, and you can also do vertebro, uh, vertebrectomy. The pain clinics are there, radiation, metastasis, and radiation therapy, we talked about stereotactic body radiation. However, imaging is very, very important. I put kyphoplast in brackets because it's a step above vertebroplasty, where you have to get to drill into the vertebral body, introduce a cannula, and introduce the stuff which is going to gently elevate the end plates to create a near normal vertebral height of the affected vertebral body. So what about patient selection? Some patients don't need vertebroplasty, but in case a patient has got unresponsive or or treatment treatment failure, failure or so, or, so, or, so, or a downset of pain, pain following vertebral fracture, 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 there is a need a for vertebral Such a pain Such a tends pain to be deep pain, pain, pain and the worst on the weight bearing, bearing, and some of and them, them uh, it's worse at, at night, night because now you've stopped so moving, moving and the feeling continues. There should be no neurological defect because in vertebroplasty, a neurological defect can be compounded by any intervention. And also, when the patient has osteoporosis, as I've said, is unable to move, unable to sit up, it's good to correct a few of the affected osteoporotic bones, especially the flat ones. Acute, subacute, Bed rest is okay, but you see, you're going to keep a patient for 12 months in bed. So th these are some of the co causes which form the indication for vertebroplasty. And we are told that only 25% of evaluated patients in advanced centers actually go in for vertebroplasty treatment. We need to monitor them. We need to use MRI scans because MRI has got an advantage to show us tissue desiccation, spinal canal, the calibre, and also be able to, it's non radiological, means non X ray producing, is magnetized. CT scan is also okay uh, to show the integrity of the bone, but everything falls in place. Even some patients go for post on emission tomography. However, in our management practice, fluoroscopy is what we use. There's absolute contraindications. Uh, here I will just tell you lack of symptoms, infection, but coagulopathy can be corrected. Spinal canal compromise can be corrected by orthopedic vertebrectomy. So I think that uh, I seem to have gone the time I wanted. I'll just pass a word that uh, when we see these patients, we do conscious sedation, but we need an anesthetist to be on our side. Also, we need to ensure that those who need the antibiotic cover are given, since most of these patients are bedridden and may suffer opportunistic infection. And then also, we need a C arm, which is going to guide us accurately. There are many aspects which we must consider. And the biggest aspect today is one of teamwork. The next aspect is cost effective. Are there any areas I've left? Yes, there are many. We've not done uh, diagnostics and this is bone biopsy. It's a long topic, and they give an overview to demonstrate relevance of our work. And of course, my sense of great interest to join the team that is giving the best care 
to our patients in trauma and others with bone lesions, including metastasis. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for the invitation. Once more, I must admit that uh, these echoes are lack of my good and special and preparedness. I hope I'll sit with our lady at your office and you'll give me another opportunity at one other stage. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wanga, for the talk. Uh, let me see if any questions have been posted. I'm not seeing any questions on my chat. Anybody with a question can raise up his hand. Hello. Uh, my first question, Dr. Wanga. Yes. How sir. much will it cost to do up a temporal plastic by an interventionist? Uh, Local, I think we have two aspects the intervention radiologist factor and the hospital factor. The intervention radiology should not cost more than uh, $200. In other words, if a doctor gets 25000 for doing fluoroscopy and managing pain, it's okay. Now, the next thing is the consumables, especially cement and needles. Those ones could cost another uh, 300, no, no, $30. I'm thinking of uh, making it in Kenya shillings. If the hospital, the doctor, and work under 100,000, I think the patient will have a lot of relief. Okay, um, when you put in, uh, yes, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, any other question? I'm not seeing another question. What is the complication rate like? Wanga, what's the complication rate like? Oh, the complication rate can go up to 10 to 20%, and that's very high. When we discuss about the best standard, best practice requires careful selection of patients. The site of uh, treatment should not have no evidence of activity infection. We should give uh, pro prophylactic antibiotic, depending on where we are. Uh, centers outside of uh, Africa, they talk of uh, tobramycin, but here maybe we might talk of rosafin, clindamycin, or something. So the infection rate is high. And when done well, no infection. Okay. Please, if you have any question, you can raise up your hand or put it on the chat. Chairman, I read something. Dr. Mreva said something about uh, imaging guidance, something I didn't read it all.
You can read the question. Dr. Wanga. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Wanga, there is a question on the chat. Oh. <laughs> What's the proportion of image guided biopsies that give positive use? Okay. okay. Uh, in terms of image guided biopsy, the yield depends on the availability of bone biopsy needle. I'm sorry to tell you, there are few. Two, people are going to areas where there's necrotic bone. Tumor growth is on the margin. And the margins are tend to be a bit hard if you don't have appropriate needle cutting uh, suitable for the bone. We use gauge, one, gauge 11 to gauge 14. Uh, I want to think that uh, we must be frank and say two things. One, don't do bone biopsy when you know the orthopedic surgeon's intervention route is different. So you meet with him and say, when you fish this bone, how do you want to go about it? So that your root does not cause seeding. Peter, the trouble you have, sir, is that um, we don't have sufficient supply of bone biopsy needles. Two, we have not involved our anesthesiologists to find it palatable to give us sufficient pain management. Okay. I'm waiting for another question, if any. Fine, in the absence of any... Oh, Mr. Seba has a question. How are your results in spine multiple myeloma and metastatic spine lesion? Sir, I've not, I've not done one. But I've done that of last year. Yes. For trauma only. Trauma only. No. It's an area I want us to walk in together. I don't hear your answer, Dr. Wanga, on this one. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. I did not get your answer on the oh. question on my, on Dr. My, Dr. Museve. Dr. Museve asked a good question. The results on vertebroplasty or multi myeloma. then I answered, I've not been able to see or manage one. Point number two, I said, I've handled patients of trauma, especially of chronic nature. And this has been to do bone management, I mean, bone, bone pain control and cement introduction. But as I said, the needles are few and we can't risk our patients. Finally, I would like us to work in as a team because this is something which is practiced by even or trauma and orthopedic specialists. Yes, um, that's interesting. And it means that uh, we as the surgeons who see the patients, then we can always get in touch with uh, Dr. Wanga. By the way, Dr. Wanga is very mobile. 
You can get him to Kisumu, I get him to Machakos, get I've talked to him and we have met the basic requirements. Because to me, the photocopolis and those things where you're using cement and reducing them on the local, I mean, that sounds very easy and better compared to the surgery that we normally have to do. And for patients who have tumors, who are quite sick otherwise. I think this is an intervention that uh, we can use. Everything looks favorable. And then we can be talking about our results. If we are not calling the interventionist for our patients. Uh, Dr. Wanga, any final comment to us? My final comment is that eh, I want to apply to be an associate member of the Association of Orthopedic Specialists in Kenya. Two, we like to give more talks based on the interest of our colleagues who are members so that we can go into in depth. Uh, thank you very much, members. Let's do our polling, which I can see is going on. Remember that for us to get our CPD points, we need to do that last part. We need to do As we go on, let me remind our members that uh, we shall be having a monthly grant round. It will be led by the residents. It will be on a rotational basis. Soon we shall post the timetable as to who is starting and when. We shall see whether we can do one this month. And uh, for every one or two consultants to preside and guide the discussion. Irene, stand with Polly. We can give 20 more seconds. Okay, let's hurry up. Let's hurry up. Ten out of that three are voted. Why not gonna vote on a voting card? On a voter's card. We can we can go with this twenty one. We can go with this. Good. Thank you very much. We can close it. So on behalf of uh, KOA, I wish to thank Dr. Wanga for agreeing to be our facilitator today, Dr. Wanga. We are happy to have you. Uh, and at that, I would like to bring the meeting to a close. And I thank everybody who attended uh, this talk. Thank you very much and have a good night.